No, no.
o'clock, half past ten, and they flood in on the. Po- So we're starting the service next week at 25-2. Liam's what? No. June. Oh. He loves you. Pardon? Oh. Good morning, everybody. Can we find a seat and uh, make yourself comfortable? It is uh, for you to be with us this morning. Those, those lights are lovely and warm. It doesn't take me much to get distracted. <laughs> <sighs> me neither. Shall we uh, find a nice, comfortable seat? Those lights are boiling. I feel like I'm getting a suntan on my forehead. Um, it's great for you to join us this uh, Sunday. This Sunday is a little bit different uh, than average Sunday with it being our Sunday. Is this microphone working? It's a little bit different than, uh, I just can't hear myself, which is a bit odd. A little bit different than our um, usual service on a Sunday. Today uh, we are going to spend a bit of time looking forward to the year and the year ahead of us but also centering ourselves around some values and hopefully bringing some clarity for you and a sense of direction. When you get in your car, you know where you're going. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Pardon? I will in a minute. So today is just about us looking at going forward and uh, hopefully gaining a set of direction. Now, this uh, kind of what I'll be sharing today is something that's been on my heart for a, about a year or so, if I'm honest. And um, I've been prompted over this last year to wrestle with church. Big Church, capital C Church, what is it? What does it look like? And actually one of the things that came out of COVID at the very start is something that I've been dwelling on for a while and sharing this morning. Uh, and, but this has enabled me almost to bring three principles that we will be focusing around uh, and hopefully helping us all. And so this morning we're going to unpack them a little and also share some updates on certain areas of church Life, But before we do that, let's prepare ourselves and our hearts for the real reason, reason why we're, the real reason why we're here, Jesus. Shall we stand? Uh, As I say, it's going to be a little bit different. We are going to go through each principle, three principles, and then we'll have a bit of worship. We'll also be taking a part offering and then sharing. uh, Derek's brought lemon drizzle cake. So uh, we're here for Jesus, not for cake. We remind ourselves, but cake is always, cake will take church a little bit of the way. The Holy Spirit takes him the rest, okay? Let's be, let's be reliant on the Holy Spirit and not on cake. Is it your favorite cake, is it, man? Okay, wonderful. His favorite cake. Anybody else favorite cake? Lemon drizzle. Okay, okay, okay. More of a carrot cake. Jamaican ginger cake. Anybody like a Jamaican ginger yes. cake with a bit of custard? Yes. I could smack one of them. Up. Anyway. Father, we thank you for your goodness today. Lord, for the gift of family. Lord, for the gift of being together as one, joined. Lord, in unity by your spirit. Father, we 
embrace you and your goodness today. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in this place. We welcome you in this place. We prepare our hearts for you, Lord. And we ask you, Holy Spirit, at the start of this morning, that you would be in us, amongst us, with us, speaking to us, Lord. Speaking to us, Lord, this morning about who we are, what we're about, where we're going. Speak to us this morning, Lord, about what's important on your heart. Because, Lord, we want to be doing your work with your agenda and nobody else's. We want to be guided by you, Lord. This is your church. We thank you, Lord, for your promise that you will build your church. But Lord, when it's in your plan, when it's in your hands, there is nothing that will come against you. So Lord, thank you today that we are joined in your church, your precious family of God. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Minister to our hearts, Lord, as we give you an offering of worship this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. Amen.
God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. How great. Jesus in. <laughs> How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. Oh, sing. How great. How great is our God. Let me sing again. How great is our God. Jesus. Lord, we declare your greatness, Lord, over our lives, over this place, Lord, over our nation today. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the name of names, Lord, the name above all names. Scripture says that one day every knee shall bow to the goodness, to the greatness, to the authority of the Lord. 
And Lord, we declare today that we bow down in worship and surrender to you, our Lord and Saviour. Lord, there is none like you. And we're grateful. And we celebrate your goodness, Lord. Who you are in this place, who you are in our lives, all that you are doing amongst us and through us, Lord, we celebrate you. Thank you, Lord, that someone so great, so powerful, so sovereign chooses to, wants to work in our lives and through us. That, Lord, you take these broken vessels and, Lord, you do incredible things. Thank you, Lord, that we all matter. Thank you, Lord, that the the least of us is the most important to you. We get to experience that each day, Lord. So help us to understand it first and foremost and to proclaim it to those around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do grab a seat for a moment. Uh, worship team, you could also take a seat or your, your little legs will hurt, Jan. They will. Yeah, they will. They do. So there's, look, there's five seats there on the front row. No one ever sits on that front row. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, we've decided to throw away the other microphone and use this one so it won't uh, cause any interference. So, um, as I said uh, before we got going, um, I just need to check something. These jeans are so bad. So bad. Uh, I depend on so many good people telling me I just thought I would check myself. Uh, maybe I should have done it before I got up here, but never mind. Um, but if, if anybody notices, just, just nod your head, please, and save me. So as I mentioned earlier on, uh, morning, Tom, uh, well, welcome to our Vision Sunday. And um, if you can put the first, second slide up, please, Sam. We've got a new piece of uh, software and we're... I don't like that. Does anybody else? It does my eyes in. I can't find how to get rid of it right now, but I will. Bear with me. Uh, As I said, today is our Vision Sunday, and it's something that we do each year, and it's something that we uh, center ourselves around to look forward to share uh, some uh, things that are going on in church life and to give us a sense of direction. How many of you now are dependent on your sat-nav? How many have still got a map in their car? The oldies. You're not all old. If, if I was to give you a map now, Zach, you wouldn't know what to do with it, would you? No, no. It's scary, isn't it? But when we jump into a car and we set off somewhere, we have, the, we have an idea of where we're going to go, don't we? I mean, you'd be silly if you got in your car and you didn't know where you were going because you'd waste a lot of petrol. So today is about looking the course, looking the journey, and uh, myself and Hannah, we've been here, uh, I think, six years. This is our seventh year, and they say that things change after each kind of lumps of seven years, and so we're looking like that and preparing ourselves for that and kind of casting what's ahead. And so what we share today is not just about the next two weeks, it's not just about the year, but it's about the next few years in setting our course. Does that make sense? Wonderful. Loving your pink hair, Sue. Think it suits you? If I I was brave enough, I'd have pink hair too. Uh, So to do that, there's a lot of noise. Lots of noise. And so I've tried to kind of stick my head in a bucket for a while uh, with some air defenders on and glasses and everything. So I can just shut out the noise because sometimes There's lots of noise from whether it's culture, whether it's uh, agenda, whatever it is. And sometimes you just need to take yourself away and just listen to him. 
And so I've been trying to do that in very small doses because life is noisy and chaos chaos seems to just be all around. And um, I believe that kind of there's been something on my heart, as I say, for, for, for over a year that through this last year of, of thinking things through and piecing through things through together, I've been able to come to this point and speak about these three key principles for us moving forward as Hope Community Church. Willow's grown. And the first one that I, first principle that I believe as Hope Community Church we need to centre ourselves around is this. Sam, could you put uh, that graphic on for me, please? Building bridges. Building bridges. The first principle is that we are a people who believe in building bridges. Let me unpack that for a moment. Sam, if you could put the next uh, p- scripture on, please. Peter uh, writes this in uh, 1 Peter 2. Rid yourselves of all malice and all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, slander of every kind. Just want to take a moment to look at this thing called malice. Malice is nursing grudges. We don't do that, do we? Nursing grudges against a particular person or society as a whole. Malice. So Peter also encourages them to separate themselves from the world. And we can get a bit, we can go the other way. Because in my observations, Christians can live separateness, separateness in two different ways. Some Christians live this out by getting a little bit weird. We don't know any weird Christians, do we? Some Christians live this out by becoming a bit harsh and judgmental on the people around them. People who are not like them. People who are not Christians. People who maybe have a different lifestyle or look a little bit different than Joe Bloggs walking down the street. And this type of thing is indicated by Peter's word, malice. The other way of living, of of this separation... Is it to do so without judging, without condemnation, motivated towards those who are different from us with love, with compassion, with understanding? Peter says, rid yourselves of malice. What he wants you to do is approach people with love, with compassion, with understanding. And as Christians, this is our our alternative to response to people. It just needs us to have a little bit of wisdom and a lot of grace. Peter then moves on from this idea of talking to individual Christians and now begins to talk to the community of believers that we know as the church. This, you will find, is Peter's heart. Community. Verse 4, he says, come to him a living stone. Peter's writing to Gentile converts uh, that, that, that had no Jewish descent from, and they were from all kinds of backgrounds. He calls Christ a living stone that's contrasting the pagan idols at that time that they would have previously worshipped dead stones, dead pieces of wood. He's calling Christ deliberately the living stone. He's not lifeless. He's not wood. He's not some inanimate object. That inanimate, in, in, that is the right word, isn't it? Yeah. He's not making some thing out of stone, and everyone else is worshiping it. He's calling it the living stone. And he goes on in verse five. He says, "You yourselves are living stones." You're a living stone. We are not literal pieces of rock this morning, but as we come into contact with Christ, we're transformed from being lifeless stones to living and integral part of God's temple. So think about it. If you come into contact with some kind of radioactive isotope, what's going to happen? Your hair will fall out. Colin, are you okay? 
it will, it will make you radioactive. It will make you radioactive. Coming into contact with some kind of isotope will make you radioactive. Coming in contact with the living king will make you alive. And he brings, some of you are excited about that. If we belong to Jesus, we become like him, and that is reflected in our life together as the church. Verse 5, he says, Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. By saying we are a holy priesthood, he's not saying that all of us are priests by office. We don't have to walk into church with a nice collar on today. But that corporately, as the church together, we have a priestly role. You are a priest. You're a priest. Do you feel like a priest? You're right, mate. She's okay. So back in the day, oh, back in the day, priests were men. And they were men who served the temple in Jerusalem. But in contrast, Peter envisions a universal church in which all men and women at all times, in all places, serves as, serve as priests. At all times, in all places. You are a priest. You're a priest in the post office. You're a priest in the factory. You're a priest in the workshop. You're a priest in the hospital. You're a priest in the coffee shop. You are a priest everywhere and anywhere. So what are you supposed to do in this priestly role? The word priest comes from a Latin word, pontifex. Pontifex. That means bridge builder. Bridge builder. So the priest is a bridge. Priests form a bridge for God to come to the people and for the people to come to God. We all have a priestly role because as Christians, as a church, we must be a bridge between God and the community. We're living stones. Peter gives us an idea of what this looks like in verse 5 and he says that our purpose is to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Christ Jesus. These, this refers to offering ourselves to God in service and in worship. This is our spiritual worship. This is the way in which we act as a bridge, a holy bridge priesthood through our worship activities and through other things, our good deeds. And so as we work for the transformation of community as bridge builders, we are bringing the kingdom of God into the community. We are a people called to be bridge builders, being bridges. And we've got lots of things going on in the church that incorporates this. And I'm going to in, uh, invite Fiona to come to the platform if she can. Do you want us to lift you up in your wheelchair? Or? And so Fiona's just going to share us a little bit of uh, news and updates and things about the Hope Hub, which is just one way we are being bridges. Well done, Fiona. Morning, everybody. Oh, it's so lovely to be back here. Um, I've missed, missed you all. I'm just going to recap a little bit on the Hope Hub because we've been open 16 months now. And it, in some ways, it seems ages. In other ways, it seems a really short time. And I know there's a number of new faces here that won't have heard this before, but I thought it would help just to go back to explain the thinking behind setting it up. Um, and day to day, we don't notice changes that have gone on because we just, you know, they just happen. But actually, when we look back, so much has happened in a relatively short space of time. So I thought I'd mention a, a few of the whys and the wherefores of behind the hub. So the aim has always been outreach. 
um, we were looking at finding updated ways to reach and to support the local community. Um, and of course, what we wanted to do in that was bring them all into this church family, or any church family. And I'm sure you all agree with me that one of the hardest things for a non-Christian to do is to actually walk into a church building. And I don't know whether you know this, but in fact, an awful lot of church growth is, you know, individual church growth is just as a result of Christians moving from one church to another. The hardest part of church growth is getting new Christians, or non-Christians rather, in through the door. So we, were, we started looking at new ways to achieve this. Um, and we looked back at everything that we'd been doing as a church, all the activities we'd carried on pr prior to this. So work with older people, Hawthorne's Cafe, Jan. Um, we looked at youth work, we looked at the bacon runs, the recovery courses, sleep safe with rough sleepers, the rough sleeper buddy schemes, everything that we'd been doing. And we used this as research to identify the local needs that were being unmet because we felt there was little point in duplicating what was being done elsewhere in the locality. And, you know, by meeting people's needs, you know, it gives us this opportunity to draw close to them. And what we found was a need for provision for people of all ages, particularly on low income, a need to reduce loneliness and isolation, and quite a big need to build up trust within the local community and you know particularly in the immediate locality of the church so the vision to do that was to create the hub and we saw that as being a welcoming and friendly place we wanted to be able to offer very inexpensive but good quality food and drink and we wanted it to have an upmarket feel the essence was that, you know, like going to a nice coffee shop, but for the people who can't afford to go to a nice sh coffee shop, so that as they walked in the door, they would feel cherished, um, it would have a modern look and good quality crockery and furnishings. The ethos has always been that we would start small, making people feel welcome, getting to know them, building up trust with them, and then hopefully getting them involved in the activities or we might be supporting them. We love it if they want to become volunteers because we hope that the more contact they have with us, the more they'll notice that there is something different about us. I don't mean that we're weird. Um, but that they might ask more about our beliefs and you know, why we do what we do. And I have to sort of just point out what it's not about. It's not about scaring people off the first time they walk in the door by telling them that Jesus loves them. Now, we all want to do that because that's what we feel. And I had this example the other day of like, you know, if, we, if someone invented the best tasting chocolate that helped you lose weight, we'd want to tell everybody about it. And that's how we feel about Jesus. Um, and though, but tempting though it is, we have to stop ourselves from doing it because it can be really off-putting for people. And one of the best ways we can reach people gently is to have them come and volunteer with us, um, because that way they have regular contact, they can get to know us as a family, and they can learn our values. Um, so just looking back over the last year, as this is a sort of an annual review, um, we need to look at it against the backdrop of what else was going on in the world. So there's been huge financial challenges affecting all churches and charitable organizations alongside an ever-increasing need for support. And this has been unprecedented in our recent memory because across the, ch across the country, churches have been experiencing a drop in membership, a drop in income, and a loss of volunteers, in part due to the issues arising after COVID all charities have been hit by reduced donations and rising running costs. And in a nutshell, that means we have more people needing more support at a time when income available to provide that support is ever, ever decreasing. That's not a great picture, but we have been successful here because we identified these issues and we created a plan in advance 
so that we would, we've been able to put things in place and it's given us a resilience that some places don't have. And that's why some churches have closed and are closing. Yes, we've had a really, really challenging time with our finances. Um, I think you all know that. And I'm sure you all know that if we were to carry out everything we did pre-COVID, purely on church financing, we would have stopped a whole load of those activities because we just wouldn't have had the funds to run them. Um, and so we've been blessed that God gave us the initiative to go after grant, grant fundraising. And initially it was just to refurb the cafe, but then we realized actually we needed to look to external financing to maintain the provision that we've, we've done here for years and to address those needs within the community. One of the problems we have is that there's virtually no funds out there to fund church activities. So even repairing church buildings is, is a challenge to find funds for. But there are funds out there for community work. And a lot of what we do is community work, um, children's work, over 65 meals, or load the cafe. It's all community work in, in one way or another. And if we look back to this period of when we got the money to start the Hope Hub, we've actually managed to get in £35,000 towards our church activities. Um, and we have applications already in for a whole lot more. So you might think something like easy fundraising, if you, those of us who do it, you look at it and you think, oh, that only got 16p. Was it really worth the effort? But the answer is yes. Because just through easy fundraising, so nobody's had to do anything other than make sure we've pressed a button if we're doing shopping online, we've raised over £130. Um, okay, that's not going to do masses, but that's £130 we didn't have, and we've got it without doing anything. So we've got lots of successes to celebrate in the last 12 months of the Hope Hub. And I have, you know, just thinking back, I've identified quite a few things to point out. We may just be taking them into in, taking them for granted. We may not be aware of them. So here goes. So first of all, word of what we're doing at the hub is out there, and we've seen we've got lots of other churches and charities following us on social media. To, you know, I guess they're interested in what we're doing. People are coming into hub to find out what we're doing as well. Um, I mean, not just customers, but people from other charities coming in. To date, we've, ha we've had at least 27 volunteers helping in the cafe. That has meant building friendships, gaining experience, skills, qualifications. It's reducing loneliness. It's building confidence. And it's enabled some people to move on to employment or volunteering in elsewhere in something that they wanted to do more. And I regard each one of those as a great success. We also, last year, extended the community space by refurbing the, the rear hall and the toilets. We had a grant for the furniture and, the, and we had a donation of skills from the youth group from Elim Letchworth Garden City when they came down last year. We also installed a new boiler for the cafe and the, and the hub and that was thanks to a donation. Prior to that, we didn't have hot water and... Um, you know, come the winter, we weren't going to have any heating. So that's a huge blessing. We also created the little sitting area outside, and it was all free from recycled materials and lots of hard work from Derek and Roger to do it. Safe Space Mindful Crafts has just celebrated its first year. When we opened, we were told that we were the only low-cost, let alone free, craft provision opening up in Bournemouth since COVID, and we were used by mental health support workers, workers to bring their clients to. We managed to get funding of £1,000 to pay for some tools and materials, and that's going to last us well into next year. We also had a coffee morning with Prama. Um, it was set up to reduce isolation and loneliness in Winton. This is one thing that didn't take off as we'd hoped it to do, and I think that was largely due to the fact that it was set up in conjunction with 
help and care who do social prescribing through GP surgeries. And they dropped out just before it started. But the main thing is that we had to go. We, we tried to meet a need. If that need wasn't there, fine. It didn't cost us anything either to do it. Um, some of you may know that we gained a support grant from the local council last year to offer food support. Now, that enabled us to do the school holiday meals over the summer. It helped us with the monthly um, community meal and our youth meals on Friday afternoons. It's also helped us with the holiday at home last summer and the Christmas meals and children's parties. If we hadn't had that food support grant, I'm not sure that any of those activities would have been able to carry on because we just didn't have the funding within the church to do it. We've also been used by Linwood School. Uh, they came, as they've come a few times uh, for outings with the pupils. And what they said was that we were different because all the children felt welcomed and you know, treated, not just welcome, rather than feeling excluded or having funny looks and being a bit frowned upon, which had been their experience in some of the other places. So, you know, that's very much the sort of thing we want. We want everybody to feel welcome. We want everyone to feel cherished when they come here. And nobody has to fit a mold or, or fit a certain type. We were one of the first warm spaces to open up in Bournemouth. We gained 100, 500 pounds from a, to set up our warm space. And then over the winter, we had another large lump of money from the council to provide the winter food and warmth support that's been doing. It's also helped us with our fuel bills, which has enabled us to continue to, o continue to open to offer that support. Um, the the take-up of warm space has, has been surprisingly low, but this is the same all over the country. It's not just us. Um, but, you know, we still have people using it, just as not as many as we thought we would do. We've also joined Access to Food, which is a council initiative. We're part of a new food support network in Winton. So we, we meet up and we liaise regularly with the other churches and charities in this area to provide food support and other support. We exchange information and we minimize duplication. And through access to food, we've got access to free training, like food hygiene training. And just a couple of small things. Since new, just since the new year, we've gained a little bit more funding to complete some of the decor in the rear hall and to buy some new crockery. Um, we've also got new projects in the pipeline. We want to look at our carbon footprint and find ways to be more fuel efficient in the long term. And then when we've got that information, we can seek funding to achieve it. We have also been submitting funding applications to complete the refurbishment of the back hall. We're hoping to replace the windows, the flooring, the ceiling, and, and get some new AV equipment if we're successful with the bids. We're also putting together our biggest bid yet, which would be funding a two-year pilot project for some children and youth provision. Um, so watch this space. These things t can take months to come through, so we won't know for months what has been successful. But the essence of what I wanted to sort of say here today is that at a time when many churches are having to reduce the activities on offer, we are bucking that trend. We are expanding our footprint in the community. Yes, we know we've got lots more to do, but we couldn't do any of it without all your practical help and support, your gifts of time and skills. And I know I mentioned that we've managed to get a lot of funding. Please don't let that affect your tithing. We need every penny you can give us to run the fundamental church activities, not least of which is paying our pastor. But I do want to thank, you, thank everybody who's been involved. We really, really appreciate everything you've done. I'm not going to single out people because they're just a wonderful team. Um, and we always welcome new volunteers. And I'd just say keep watching because God's doing wonderful things in this place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Fiona. So...
that just gives us a bit of a picture of one aspect of building bridges as far as church life goes. But building bridges is not just the work of the hub. Uh, we know some of you come to it, your regular attenders, the community meal each month does an incredible job of reaching people and building bridges and feeding empty bellies. Uh, the team works so hard on a Monday. They're here at stupid hours in the morning and they're here till stupid hours in the evening uh, doing all that they can to serve the community that come in. It's another way of building bridges and we're really grateful to the, all those that get involved with that. Another bridge that we're beginning to build starts this Wednesday evening, which is our Limitless families. So starting this coming Wednesday, we're providing a space for children, young people and families to get together in this space. So Wednesday's nights will be a space of food with games, teaching, encouragement and support to carers and families, building bridges into our community, serving the families around us. Now, I'm aware this isn't going to be an overnight success, but what we're starting this Wednesday is going to be a long journey, which I hope will become a vibrant space for families. If you think of something like Messy Church, which has been proved to transform churches and communities... We're going to embark on a bit of a journey, but without some of the messy church stuff. And so if you would like to get involved, if you're free, whenever on a Wednesday night, it doesn't have to be every week, whenever you are free on a Wednesday night, come and speak to us because we will love to have you on board. That It's going to be from half past five to half past seven. And so Wednesday nights will be a good time. If you want to get involved, the more the merrier. Another bridge that started when I first came here within a couple of months and we started the bacon run. For three years, we didn't miss a Saturday. For three years, we didn't miss a Saturday. And then this thing came along called COVID, which completely just disrupted everything. And we've never been able to get it back on track. For three years, so many faithful people came out. The first couple of weeks was absolute chaos, and then we started to get a little bit kind of, uh, I think the first few weeks, there was like 15 of us going out on the streets, and we realized that we were better off doing it as part of a team, and a team started to build with Darren and Claire and Colin and Candice and Rachel and Roger and Janet and Charlie and John and myself. If I forgot your name, I'm sorry. I do love you. But I think, I think there was a few more as well along the way, some of the students that we've had. And, but COVID came and completely disrupted it. And we've, we've tried to get back on there a couple of, once or twice, and it's just not happened. But actually listening to some people the last couple of weeks, been voicing, con, you know, a, 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 not a concern, but an interest, a motivation to get back out there. And so we would love to get back out there doing the Baker Run as soon as possible. But what that means is we need a small group of people to help us. Obviously, the more the merrier, but I'm, I'm reluctant to start it if we haven't got at least eight people on a piece of paper to say that they'd be up for it. Because then that means that, that doing it every week. And it becomes quite a burden if you are doing it every week. And it's just not fair. I know people want to do it, some people would love to do it every week and try to do it every week, but eventually it catches up. And so we'd like to get a pool of about eight people, eight the minimum, at least the, the perfect number would be free every Saturday. The more the merrier. And so we want to get back out there on the streets doing all that we can to build relationships with those people. Because they are the down and outs. And I'm telling you now, if Jesus was here now, that's where you would find him. You wouldn't see him in here eating a cheese and bacon panini. Because he wouldn't eat bacon anyway. Because that's, that's another thing. Would he eat bacon? It's okay for Jesus to eat bacon. There's a theological debate. Maybe we'll do that. We'll do a course on does Jesus eat bacon. Um, where was I? <laughs> I 
that's, that's a good lecture. There's, anyway, what was I talking So those people matter, and, and we walk by them every single day, all of us, and we all have our different relationships with them, and I think we are to be a people that builds bridges with those kind of people because it's those kind of people that Jesus cares about. And so we want to do that. We are desperate to do that. And so if you would like to get involved, come and speak to me uh, today. That would be awesome. And um, so, Peter calls us as living stones. So we all have an important role to play in building bridges wherever we are. Some of you will remember that we had Barry Woodward came for a weekend and he did a Saturday morning specifically on equipping us to tell our story. And it was really challenging. And I know a lot of people got a, a, a lot out of it. Barry's coming back in June to do exactly the same. Uh, we may do a bit, little bit more outreach as well on that Saturday. Um, just on that. Um, yeah. I think it's time for us to be a little bit louder. What I mean is not by your voice, but by our actions. And I, I, I believe that there is a street there that is full, that is so busy, that street. And, and so what I would like to do is begin a journey and a conversation about how we can be present on the street at different times, in different moments of outreach, whether it is prayer, whether it is foot washing, whether it is good deeds, whatever it is, I don't care, but I think it's time that we are more present in our community that way. And so we want to start a conversation, what it looks like. Obviously, we need resources and all that kind of stuff, but Barry coming along is one way that we can get involved and he will help us a little bit more. Also, Mark Greenwood, a, num a, a few years ago, quite a few people came along to the boot camp, the evangelism boot camp. It's something else that we will be doing probably next year because he's so busy, but we want to get a series of nights booked in where Mark comes along and takes us through a, an evangelism boot camp where we are prepared to get out there a little bit more. Because you can't build a bridge sat on your backside. It's scary to think that we may be the only Christian people our neighbours ever meet, our work people ever meet. We may be the only Bible that people come into contact with. And so we have a responsibility to be a bridge between this world and God. And so we are a people who believe in building bridges. And we will look and journey and explore what that means for us over the next few years. Why don't we stand? I'm going to invite Roger, Roger, to come and pray before the team leaders in worship and we take up our offering. Thank you. Father God, I just lift up the whole concept of us being bridges between earthly society and you, Father God. I just pray that we can all be your hands and feet wherever we are and wherever walks of life we're given, Father God, um, to travel. We just pray, I just pray that we can all be effective ambassadors for you, Father God. And I believe in building a bridge is um, what you call us to do, Father God. You want us to bring people to you. So help us on that journey. We don't want to do it on our own. We need your strength. We need your guidance. We need your divine intervention to make sure that happens. And I just pray that we can all be more effective for you in this coming year. Please bless us mightily on that journey, Father God. Help us seek you every day to get that to, for us to be effective for you. Thank you, Jesus. We need you. Amen. Amen. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. My hope is built. Oh, uh -huh.
Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing that again. Let's sing that again. Top of your voices. What a great sound. Let's sing to Jesus. Praise the one who set me free. Yes, Lord, you are our living hope. Jesus Christ, the one and only. There's no other name. You, Jesus, are our living hope. You are the hope that we have. You are the hope that we need. You are everything to us, Lord Jesus. And we salute you. We celebrate you. We worship your name. Jesus. Jesus, you are. Jesus, you are. You are. You are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You are the hope in this life and the next. You are the hope that whatever circumstance we're in right now, It's not going to stay the same, but it will change. You are the hope that we have as an anchor to our souls, firmly fixed and secure, steady in the ship of this life. You are the reason that we live, Lord. We are your people, people of hope. And when we have hope, we have life, life in the fullest. Amen. 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 Take a seat, church. You are sounding great. Good on you. Well done. So, if uh, we bring back to these principles that I want to share, uh, the second one is this, being family, being family. We are a people who believe in being family. Peter, again, encapsulate what it means to be family in, in, in chapter 3 of 1 Peter, verse 8. He says, finally, all of you have unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, a tender heart, and a humble mind. A family will display these characteristics. If you think about the, we haven't got time, but the one another passages that you find in the New Testament, they provide a great snapshot of what it means to be a like-minded church. Love one another, honor one another, serve one another, submit to one another, carry each other's burdens, compassionate towards one another, encourage one another, be patient with one another, forgiving one another, pray for one another. We have unity when we do for one another what God has called us to do. As a small community, one of the blessings is that we are close enough to really know each other to really sympathize with one another when life is a little bit rubbish. That is, when people hurt, we can share those hurts. When people rejoice, we can share in that rejoicing. When we need forgiving, we can enter dialogue with each other. In this this passage, Peter uses this phrase, brotherly love, which could be better translated as a friendly brother. What is a friend? Someone we love, someone we spend time together with, somebody that we care for. What is a brother? They're annoying, 
They do my head in. No, I'm only joking. A brother is a brother. Sorry, Sean, if you're ever watching. A brother, we may not have the same things in common. In fact, how, how often are brothers the complete opposite? Chalk and cheese. Sam and Zach are pointing to each other right now. But what we have in common is that Christ is our saviour and it's the bond that brings us together. My brother and I, we're completely different people. We went to the same wedding a couple of weeks ago and the one thing that brought us together was being part of the same family. We were able to celebrate a great day for my mum. It brought us together. And what we have in common is that Christ is our saviour and it is the bond of his love, of the relationship that we have in him that brings us together. One of my favourite times together is that when, whenever we have food, food is good, amen? But whenever we have some kind of bring and share, whatever it is, whatever's going on, when we spend more time with each other and I just sit back and I watch people devouring all the food and then eating together, talking together, building relationships with each other. I love it. I love it. Put your hands up if you remember Tina's biryani. It's a legend now, Tina. Your biryani is a... The good news is that there'll be more time for biryani very soon. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we want to do more bring and shares. We want to get round the table a little bit more. It's important. We know that phrase, don't we? A family that eats together stays together. There's something special about eating together as a family. Peter also goes on, he uses that phrase, tender-hearted. And it's one of those words that we don't really use anymore. You know that John Porter? Oh, he's really tender-hearted, isn't he? Yeah, he is. We don't use it much more, but it has the idea of being tender towards one another. You're very tender, John, like a juicy bit of lamb. (laughs) You could call it being compassionate to one another. Tender-heartedness is compassion to help you out. How can I help you right now? We are compassionate for the needs of one another, just like any family. We are in this together. And because we care for one another, we have compassion for one another. At the end of that, Peter uses that word humility. And it seems odd in comparison with the rest of these statements. But what is the greatest obstacle to having unity of mind, sympathy, brotherly love, and a tender heart? These first four characteristics require us, they ask something of us to serve one another, to bear with one another, and forgive one another. And each of those require us to be humble. Can we have unity of mind if we are always demanding our own way? Can we be sympathetic or tender-hearted if we are demanding our own way? Can we have brotherly love if we are demanding our own way? The answer is no. We will have to be humble servants like Christ in order to be what God has called us to be. And so often it is our pride that makes us hurtful and uncaring. So often it is our pride that causes us not to forgive. Peter paints a clear picture of what family looks like. And so we want to do as much as we can to create family, to model family, to nurture family. And there's no doubt about it that life throws obstacles along the way whenever family get together. And family life is sometimes testing. But family love gets you through the tests and the stresses and the strains. There comes obstacles at times and there comes joy along at the time too. Families go through seasons, and we're no different. Seasons come and go for all of us. We're in a season, and then you as individuals are in different seasons as well. And a season for us as Hope Community Church that is changing for us today is our leadership. Four years ago, perhaps to this day, 
we changed the name from Centre Point Elim to Hope Community Church. It's near enough to the day that we changed our name. And so we're kind of, it's our fourth birthday, if you like. But four years ago, Darren and Claire came to join us. And they've journeyed with us along the way. They survived trips to Birmingham with some of us. Colin snoring in an Airbnb. We got through it. We got through it. <laughs> Those paper walls. <laughs> but Darren and Claire have journeyed with us as Hope Community Church. They didn't really know church before Hope Community Church. And they've journeyed with us through this. And you will know that... Uh, over a year ago, Darren came on as an elder because we recognized something in Darren. We wanted to give him an opportunity to explore this role as an elder. We are a church that believes in giving people opportunity. I don't care who you are. You deserve an opportunity to explore gifting and to work out what it is that God's calling you to do. We say it and often, what's the worst that can happen? Okay. And so we gave Darren a, an opportunity to venture, to journey, and that's great. And we've had a good journey with him, and he's been in, involved in some great uh, conversations and some decisions that we've made. But it's also important to know where people are in their own season of life. I spoke about it earlier, COVID. It's affected us all in many different ways, and for Darren, he picked up long COVID. And he's really suffered in a season that's meant that he struggled with energy, he's meant he's struggled with uh, getting to work and all loads of things. And church life has been an extra burden and pressure on him. And in the journey of this year and the, some of the conversations, it's, it's just good and honest to admit that actually eldership is not fitting for Darren. He doesn't believe that's where his heart is. Darren has an incredible pastoral heart. And he has a credible heart. Darren and Claire, they have a heart for people on the, on the outskirts. And I don't want to get in the way of anybody who knows where they are called to be. It's not my job. It's my job to go, bless you, go and serve God. That's what you want to do. And so from today, Darren will be stepping down as an elder as Hope Community Church. But also to help them in the next step of what they believe that God has put on their heart, they are taking a huge step of faith and they are almost stepping away from the whole Hope Community Church family to go and make more time and space to reach those people. And so it's important that you know and they know that they go with our blessing. So I wonder if you could invite, give Darren a, a welcome, Colin. I wonder if you can come up and, and Roger. I don't know if you want to share a few words first, Darren. Good morning, everyone. It's really nice to see you all. It really is. It's so nice to see all your lovely faces. There's some new people as well, which is really good for this church. I just want to say thank you to everybody for the journey that we've had. You know, when we, uh, we left the church in Ringwood and we, we muddled around for a little while. Uh, because we wanted to be, f uh, we wanted to get involved with community, and we lived in Bournemouth, and our church was in Ringwood, and it kind of wasn't community as in our own community. So you know, we we started coming here, and when Liam changed the name to Hope Community, that was that was it. That was like God saying, "Right, you're staying here, mate." And and we did, and we've had four great years, and it's been such a great time to be part of the the, the eldership team been part of the worship team with everybody and the, these, this honestly being in leadership being in eldership is not an easy job and it's really I'm afraid not for me um, uh, a big thing of it is that I do have long COVID and it does it, it knackers me out it tires me out and I had to take a break away that's why I say we, we disappeared and we've just had a big move as well. We've actually finally, after nearly six years, has moved to our forever home. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <coughs> that was the longest two weeks of my life, and I never want to move again. Thank you. But anyway, now, I just want to say thank you to everybody. And, you know, I wish a blessing on every single one of you guys. 
And as I say, God's calling me to get out there. Get out there. When I'm fit and able to, I will be out there. I'm been called to go back to where I've come from. You know, I've come from a quite a big biker scene, uh, uh, you know, Tuesday nights on Paul Key, Sundays on Paul Key, or out and about different bike shows. And, you know, I've, I knew I've got to know a lot of people over the years. And when I became a Christian, I went like that. See you later, guys. I'm off. Bye-bye. And I've kind of almost like kept myself within four walls of an institution. I've got to get out there. I'm going back to where I come from, and I've got to get out there. And I've got to share the love. Thank you, guys. I really, really love you. Claire and I have both... Been, it's been an honour for both Claire and I. Claire doesn't want to get out because it's just Claire. Claire doesn't want to get up and say it, but it's just goodbye. It's not forever. I'll come back forwards every now and again. All right? And all I can say as well, before I stop... Sorry, I'm not going to keep going on. That's, that's like <coughs> um, Liam was talking about the bacon run. When the bacon run was in its height, it was amazing. And I would say to anybody that has one Saturday morning for a few hours, just to get out there and, and to see these people, you will be blessed. We've been out there in the snow, the ice, the rain. We've been soaked through to the skin. But we've been out there and we've had conversations with these people. It's not just giving them the bacon sandwiches and the coffees. It's just acknowledging that these people are alive and that they're there. Just to have a chat, say hello, how you doing? Can we do anything for you? You know, we can go home and get dried and have a shower and put warm clothes on. These guys can't, they're out in it all day, every day. But please, I, I really urge you, if you've got anything in you, to get out there. Once a month on a Saturday morning, get out there. And say hello to these people. Give them a sandwich, give them a coffee. Thank you, guys. Bless you all. Just to... Um just to give you a bit of something to do while you're recovering, we've given you a car to build. I'm sorry you can't drive it, but it is nice. And hopefully it, it, it's 10 plus, but I think it will keep you occupied for a bit. Uh, 10 plus pieces. It might, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> We're, if you are comfortable, can you put your hands out for Darren and Claire? Claire, do you want to join us for prayer? Yeah? Good. I can give you some flowers then. There you go. Thank you. Father, we thank you for this couple. Lord, a kingdom couple that love you and know you. Lord, they love you so much, they want to tell the world. And Lord, who are we <laughs> to say no? Who are we to get in the way of that, Lord, when you're doing something in their lives and you're putting a burden on their hearts. And so we pray, Lord, that they would know your equipping, they would know your encouragement, they would know your provision. But Lord, in this season, first and foremost, Lord, they would know your healing. And we pray, Lord, for an, inc uh, an incredible, t powerful time, Lord, as they rest and be and soak up. And that, Lord, you would do something transformational in their lives, ready, Lord, for the for the ministry that you're calling them to. We pray, Lord, that they would go with your anointing, that you would give them the words to speak and the lives to touch. Father God, I lift up, Father God, I lift up Darren and Claire to you right now. I just thank you for all their service to you uh, ever since they became Christians and how they're on such a great journey with you, Father God. And I just pray a, a massive anointing on them and a blessing and big signposts. This is exactly which areas you want them to be effective for you, Father God, because they're more effective for you when they're doing your will than doing it on their own strength, Father God. And I just pray they'll come back here for fellowship as and when they're more than welcome. They're welcome anytime, Father God, on anything, whether it's a Bible course or whether it's a Sunday morning. It doesn't matter. They can come and be welcome because they're family. These guys are family. They're amazing people. And I bless them mightily. Please bless them, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord God, I thank you for the heart of Darren and Claire. I thank you for their willingness to do whatever it is that you have in store for them, Lord God. I thank you for an anointing that you're putting upon them to send them out. Lord God, your word says that by, by their fruit, we will know them. And Lord, I pray that there will be so much fruit. In Jesus' name.
Lord God, help them to always know that they've got a family of God behind them here, praying for them, loving them, here if they need us, Lord. Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name that they'll go with strength and all the energy that they need for every day that they minister. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Stay here, mate. You can, yeah, stay here today. Also, um, four years since we've been uh, Hope Community Church, just before that, uh, me and Colin jumped in a car on our way to Birmingham for a weekend of just dreaming about what Hope Community Church could be. Hope Community Church, the name, came out of that first weekend. We worked like squirrels. Um, what do we really do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we spent three days of eating sweets. We were fueled by so much sugar. But what we came back from was a five-year documented plan for Hope Community Church. And so what we are in today is part of that experience that we had in Birmingham. The next time we went back, we were able to take Roger and, and Fiona and Darren and Claire. No, this, the third time, wasn't it? The second time was a bit of a struggle for you, wasn't it? Yeah, he struggled with that. Um, it was too much sitting about. He, he, ate, he still ate the chocolates, don't worry. Um, <laughs> And then a, a, a little while later, we were able to go with uh, Roger and, and Fiona and Darren and Claire. And we dreamt. We dreamt for Hope Community Church. And so through Colin's heart, we've been able to put things in place that we are sat in and is a fruit of now. It, before that, though, we were in need of a worship leader. And Colin was holding the guitar at a time. And I went, do you want to be a worship leader? And he went, uh, yeah. Reluctant, to, because the first thing that Colin said was, I'm not a worship leader, and I loved that about him. He said, I'm not a worship leader, but I'll have a go. But because what I saw in Colin wasn't the, the gifting of a worship leader, it was the heart to serve. And this man's got a huge heart to serve, to serve you and to serve God. And we're thankful, we're so thankful for the time the energy, the boring meetings that he's waded through, all those hard things that he's gone through that is not part of who he is, but he's done it. And he's put some great things in place. The fruit of the worship team now is the work that he's done. The decisions that he's made in session meetings, the hard decisions, like Darren said, it is not easy shouldering the burden of being an elder. It really isn't. And he's, he's never taken it lightly, but he's put his all into every single moment of it. But today, again, Colin is stepping away from eldership. He recognizes that he's done. He's done his season. And, and we're grateful that he recognizes it himself and that he's done what he's done so far. So, Colin, we want to thank you for all your hard work, for your commitment, for your support of Hope Community Church and for the way that you've taken everybody into your huge heart. Yeah. And um, we've, got, we've got a little gift for you. Yeah, we've got a little gift for you and some flowers for Candice as well for releasing him. I know it's probably easy but kicking him out of the door. This guy is so busy, it's unbelievable. He's, he's always here, there, and everywhere doing other things. So to keep Colin occupied, we've got a Star Wars Lego kit. See? The four years was worth it. And Candice, we've got some flowers to say thank you. Darren, can you come and pray with... Candice, can you come and... Are you okay like, while we pray for you guys? You need to bring it back when you finished it to show us. Or at least a photo, yeah. Father, we thank you for this man. We thank you, Lord, for the heart that he has, uh, Lord, example to so many. Lord, the way that he has taken hold of all that's been asked of him, Lord, and also knowing in his wisdom when it's right to step away. Not being precious about anything, 
but knowing that it's all yours. Lord, we thank you for Colin and Candice and the kingdom couple that they are and have been and will be to Hope Community Church. We pray, Lord, that they would know your blessing in this new season. They would know your guidance and your care, your love and your support. Lord, we thank you for them. We pray, Lord, that they would continue to be an incredible witness to your kingdom, to the world out there. Yes, Lord, I just want to, I really want to thank you for this man's heart. This man's got the biggest heart that I've probably ever known, Lord, just a heart to just be there for anyone, any time. It just doesn't matter. He'll drop anything, this man, for, to help people, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for, for his commitment to this church, Lord, his commitment to the community, Lord, community to his fellow people, Father God, and Lord, just the commitment that he has for you, Lord, is just unbelievable. Honestly, if you can't a map it, it'd be like a stick of rock saying Jesus through the middle of him, Lord. But Lord, I just want to thank you for him, Father God, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Father God, I want to thank you for Colin and Candice. I want to thank you for all that Colin's been doing behind the scenes over this time. There's a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes that people just don't see on a day-to-day -day basis. And Colin's been there every step of the way with, with so many, many things. Um, but most of all, I want to pray um, and thank you for your wonderful um, broom cupboard ministry. In when you were in the middle of COVID, you were stuck in a broom cupboard with Liam and Hannah doing a fantastic job of reaching us guys when we were all stuck in an environment where we couldn't even get into the building. So I thank you greatly for that, and you've been a rock for me. Keep going. God bless. Amen. Thank you, Colin. Don't, you, do you want to share a few words about what's in front of you and also... Uh, Hello. No! That's... that's um. That's the X-Wing that I, I can't afford. And so I've got one at home that I've made out of bits and pieces out of Devon's Lego. It's about yay big. And it looks like that, but it's not the real one. And I'm so pleased I get to make the real one. <laughs> <laughs> How did you know? Um, yeah, it's been an amazing journey. Uh, so God tells me things, but he tells all of us things. And all of us hear from God in different ways. And... God told me to step down from eldership, and fine, that's good, and I've done that. God also um, told me, for example, to step out of the Knights of Antioch. You might be shocked about that, because the Knights of Antioch, there's been so much fruit. But God's told me to join the CMA, and I've, and I've done that. Um, but we shouldn't just do things without God showing us very definitely what we're supposed to be doing. And so we've got to pray about these things. I was praying to God about leaving the nights and joining the CMA because I thought maybe that's what I should be doing. I had this hunch, this feeling. And, uh, and the day that I was praying about it and putting my all into really asking God, Candace had shown me this book called God's Biker at, at, the, at the Christian bookshop we were in. I bought it secondhand, took it home. Little break from praying, flicked it open, and the page I opened it on, it said uh, that this guy was a, was a drummer and a biker. And I thought, well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Let's read a bit more. It was on about being in various bands, being a drummer, being, you know, Christian. And then the next page was how he then got called to join the CMA. Uh, the, and I just randomly on a page. And it was that page. And I'm like, seriously? <laughs> okay. Um, and then I asked for more confirmation, and God did that. But I won't share that one because there's some, um, some confidential issues there. But, uh, yeah, so you've got to ask God what you're supposed to be doing. Um, similarly, I felt that God was asking me to step down from leading the worship team. Not from leading worship generally, but leading the worship team. And um, my time of a few years doing it was coming to an end. And I felt that God was telling me that I would be replaced by someone that I'd trained up or had input into. And, uh, and that's what God was going to do. And and I was like, yes, okay. So over a quite a few months, I was trying to get people in the worship team trained up to take over, putting them on the leadership rotor here to try and take over. And one at a time, they're saying, it's not for me. God hasn't called me for this. <laughs> or maybe, you know, they, they were suffering from ill health and couldn't do it, whatever. 
And it got to the point where I knew I needed to step down. I knew my time was up at wor- as, as leading the worship team. And I was having a bit of a grumble at God because I couldn't find the person that was supposed to take over. And uh, I was in the back room having a bit of a grum- grumble at the worship team. And I'd had a bit of a whinge during the week and some things things been put in place to maybe help me out. And I'm saying, look, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. God's told me to step down. I'm done. No, I've tried to raise people up, but no one's doing it. I'm, I'm done. Little did I know that God's answer, while I was out there, was sat in here. Actually, you were sat over there. <laughs> do you want to jump up here, mate? <laughs> So I think everyone knows Josh Cowley, um, grew, grew up in this church, and when he was growing up, I had a little bit of input into his musical abilities, not much, but a uh, little, little tiny bit, um, but he was in my Sunday school class, and, uh, and I feel I did have input in his upbringing, so God was true to his word, and uh, do you want to take over the, where you, let's take over the story. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, hello, everyone. Um, <coughs> I kind of, the last year for me has kind of been a whirlwind. I was in Derby, studying my master's degree, and then I moved back, and God was just saying to me, you need to go where you're needed, not where you want to be. And I went to church hopping around different places and watching places online, and for some reason, this place kept coming back, and I sift through months and months of footage of this place and watching everything, and I thought, nah, I can't go back there, it's a bit sticky situation um, with it all, but <coughs> hey, you know, I, I trust in the Lord and I walked in, sat down, saw some old faces, saw some new faces and having a blend of both kind of made my heart at rest really and then saw Colin, because we've known each other uh, yeah, forever <laughs> basically, um, and then we went out for lunch and he said I've been praying for a worship leader and the reason I came here was because God told me to kind of leave, and I couldn't obviously say that, so I said, oh, I'm on a mission from the Lord, trying to be like all, you know, kind of, you know, secretive, like a spy, and then, um, uh, but I just didn't know what to say, but I kind of, I knew he kind of knew w- without us telling him, but it's just weird how we didn't, we haven't spoken in, in a few months, or, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we haven't spoken a long time, and our kind of paths were kind of syncing up, and the last few weeks, I've kind of just been, or the last month or so, I've just been kind of blessed with the team because Colin's <coughs> done amazing things, you know, throughout the la- well, last few years. And, and I've got a, a beautiful team who've got a heart for worship, you know, which makes my life a lot easier. So I've just been finding my feet. And obviously, you know, all of you guys have welcomed me. Um, and yeah, I'm just excited to see, see what's happening. You know, I've just been finding my feet the last few weeks and I've got some nice amazing things that I think we're going to see over the next few months and um, I'm just yeah it's me. let's pray for you mate yeah stretch out your hands towards uh, Josh and we'll pray for him Lord God we thank you for this man we thank you that he hears from you we thank you that through this we know that you have an amazing plan for this church uh, otherwise you wouldn't have done this for us Lord God Lord we know that uh that you're going to bless this man and give him the ability to lead the worship and the worship team. God, we just pray for a double anointing, a double anointing, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Lord God, I, I'm not a musician. Uh, I, can, I can sort of play a lot of things not very well. But Lord God, I thank you that this man has actual skill and talent. And we pray in Jesus' name that you would funnel that into an amazing ministry that would lead the, your people into your presence week by week in Jesus' name. Lord God, just anoint him, Lord. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can take your Lego now, Colin. So uh, it is uh, a little bit different for a Sunday, um, and we are going over time, but thank you for your patience. We will feed you with cake afterwards. Is that okay? So obviously... um, As the landscape of church changes and we journey through these principles as Hope Community Church, I think it's important that we have a leadership team that reflects the makeup of who we are, okay? 
So over the next few months, we will be seeking uh, and asking to bring on a steering team that will help us move the church forward. This will be uh, a forum to discuss church life. This will work as a focus group to bring in uh, new ideas with a mixture of people, as diverse as possible, who carry the heart of the church family. So if I phone you, don't be scared. But me and Roger will be uh, praying now for a while, uh, not forever, in just kind of who we feel is the right person to bring on board, and then we will begin to journey together with a steering group. And I think it's the right season to do that, and I think it's quite exciting. So, family, one another. It's important to us. Building relationships with, with each other is important to us. Spending time as family is important to us. We are a people who believe in being family. Roger, can you come and pray with us? And then we're going to worship. So you can stand and you can move around and you can wiggle your arms. Father God, I want to thank you for the family that we already have here, Father God. I want to thank you for the community right here now, Father God, who love you and want to serve you and want to serve each other. And Father God, I just lift that whole process up that we are not just good bridge builders for you, Father God, but also fantastic at coming alongside each other to boost one another in the tough times and to um, celebrate with others in the good times and to be open and honest with each other so that we can move forward as a family unit, Father God. Because where, where we all come together united, then everyone will take notice and it's all for the good because it's better in the community around us. So I pray, pray for your blessing on that, Father God, in your mighty name. Amen. Let's stand together, guys.
Spirit leaders, Spirit leaders, take us deeper, Lord. Take us deeper, Lord. Lead us, Lord, to new places, to new communities, Lord, to new people. Lead us, Lord. Take us deeper to places that we've never experienced before, Lord, in you. Take us deeper in understanding. Take us deeper in your love. Overwhelm us, Lord, with all that you're doing, Lord. Overwhelm us with your power. Overwhelm us with your presence. Overwhelm us, Lord, with your goodness. Take us deeper, Lord. Take us deeper, Lord. That is our prayer this morning, that you would take us deeper, Lord. Lord, we love you. That's what this church is all about. So let's love people, have faith for their problems, because there's problems all over there, well, everywhere, but our, our places where we are, and love, just to love people. Amen. And just one more thing, Amelia's in pain, but she's smiling. So she's had an operation, reset nose. She's four, but she's smiling. Thank you, Jesus. Father, that is our prayer this morning. That is our surrender. That you would be our lead. That you would be our guide. That, Lord, it would be you taking us deeper. That it would be you, Lord, holding us our hands into new places. Lord, let today be a commissioning for all of us. As we pray and surrender, as we release our own agenda and our own will over to you, Lord, that we would know your guidance and your strength. We love you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm aware of time ticking and just something else that I want to share, the final of these three principles. Uh, thank you for being so patient with us today. I realize that it is a uh, slog of a service. Worship team are sounding great, aren't they? just going to share for about five, ten minutes, so I don't know if you want to be sat down or standing, that's up to you guys. But our um, final principle for us to be centering ourselves around, focusing ourselves on, is this, becoming disciples, becoming disciples. We are a people who believe in becoming disciples. This is Jesus' command to the church, not just Hope Community Church, to the whole church. It speaks to our very existence of being God's people. Go and make disciples. Again, Peter, love Peter, especially this morning. In 2 Peter, <coughs> Second Peter 1 verse 3, he says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness has given us his very great and precious promises. So in this passage, Peter is addressing his number one desire, to live a godly life. That's called discipleship, living a godly life. He tells the believers that they have everything they need to live a godly life. It's all found in his divine power. God is at work in you through his divine power to give you everything you need to live a godly life. He's given you everything you need already for your walk of discipleship with him. Peter tells us that his divine power is already at work in us, whether we feel it or we don't. But we're all invited to the table. We're all invited to be in relationship with God. Each one of us has received a personal invitation to get to know God because of his goodness. Well, 
We're having a standoff. We are all invited to become disciples. Everybody who walks through that door is invited to become a disciple. We believe that everybody, whoever walks through the door, can become a disciple of Jesus. When that happens, is up to Jesus. We create the environment. The Holy Spirit does the rest. The Holy Spirit was speaking to you when you didn't even know him. He was at work in your life when you didn't even know him. He was telling me that I was listening to the wrong radio station. He's at work. Our job, create the environment. Bring them in. Let God do the rest to become a disciple. Peter tells us through his precious promises that we get to know, we get to understand, we get to learn about God is and what he is like through his precious promises, his word. His precious promises are written down for us in the Bible. His precious promises he declared over each and every one of us. His precious word that brings life. God is faithful. And when he speaks, things happen. When he speaks, he acts. He promises. And his promises never fail, and he never fails us. And so when we begin to grasp and understand his promises over our lives, God begins a work in us. The moment that you realize or the moment that it's ready for that seed of hope to take fruit, when you recognize in your heart, when you make a decision, I need Jesus, he begins something incredible. And for me, there is nothing more in this world, nothing more exciting, nothing more, nothing gives me the joy like seeing that seed of hope being planted in someone's life. I love it. I love it. Jesus promises to build his church and the gates of Hades will not prevail. We are part of that church that Jesus built, building, continues to be at work in. God said to Joshua, I will be with you. God made his promise to people throughout time and continues to make it to his people today. It's in his promises, his word. God has promises for us concerning our identity. God has promises for us regarding every aspect of our lives. Our future, our family, our gifts, our resources, our heart, our minds, our capabilities. It's all there in his book. And through these precious promises, in the second part of verse 4, you may participate in the divine nature. So through the growing an understanding of who God is, we participate in his work, the divine nature. We become disciples. We become godly. We become more empowered with his spirit. We stay aligned with him. We grow in him, in knowledge and in understanding of who he is and who we are. And we continue to live out a life pleasing to God. Discipleship, a godly life. So because you are strengthened by the Spirit, because you are growing and understanding, because you are pursuing godliness through his precious promises, you can now begin to form good habits. We all need good habits. You can begin to grow in goodness. You can begin to grow in knowledge, in self-control, in perseverance, in godliness, in affection, in love, in compassion. Peter says all these qualities are available to you through remembering who God is and what he has said. And this will keep you. All that we do on Sundays and all that we do throughout the week is to help us to become disciples. It's the fuel in many ways. Obviously, we can only do so much, but you have to do something with it too. Just a few things that we've done recently, the prayer course for those that wanted to delve a little bit deeper or to just begin to ignite their prayer life. Again, very recently, we just finished the prayer course. This new year, we started the Bible course, which starts again on Tuesday night. We're about halfway through. Just very simple ways of feeding on his promises, to begin to understand who God is. All of it helping us to become disciples. You know that we said it, we'll be preaching through the book of Acts till the probably end of September. I've already begun to, got my eye on something called practicing the way, which is coming out 
month by month and just a great resource for us. Something that I believe will help each and every one of us walk the way of Jesus. Practicing the way. Becoming disciples. We'll look at it on a Sunday. We'll look at it in teaching during the week. We'll also be able to dig deeper and apply it to our lives. Because just love people taking hold of God's promises in their life. What I've also loved, especially uh, this last kind of few months, is uh, seeing people grow in their gift of preaching. Loved it. Loved it. For somebody to get out of their comfort zone, to stand up here, to bring something that they've prepared, being vulnerable with their heart, and to see them grow in it as being incredible. And that Obviously, over the next few months, there are more people coming to share. Sue will be very soon. Charlie's at work preparing a message. Colin will be sharing Good Friday. And there'll be a few more down the line. I love seeing people have a go. What's the worst that can happen? Exactly, Anne. Thank you. It's a real joy to see. We're going to do another preaching worship workshop for those that maybe think, I maybe want to have a go at that. Look out for some news about that later. We'll also be doing a Bible course during the day at some point in the church for those that won't come out at home of an evening or can't come out. I recognize that. See, discipleship is about recognizing where people are on their walk, wherever they are. They may be a a million miles away from God. Million miles. But if they start journeying with us in whatever way, then their discipleship journey has started. As Mark Greenwood says in his boot camp, if even their language goes from, I'm coming to your church, to saying, I'm coming to my church, that's, that's great. That's massive. Then one day, they're going to sit, give their hearts to Jesus. Because what God starts, he brings to completion. I mean, we get a bit rushed and go, well, I've, I've told him about Jesus 50 times and he's still coming to church, but he's not doing anything about it. Well, God's still at work in their case. Thank you, Matthew. So whether it's growing in the word, whether it's growing in character, whether it's growing in emotional healing, whether it's growing in serving each other, whether it's growing in self-awareness, whether it's what, whatever it is, watching people grow in God is a beautiful thing. And it's why we're here. Everything else brings us to this place to become disciples. We are a people who believe in becoming disciples. Can you put that final slide on, please, Sam? And so everything that we're going to be doing is based around these three principles. If you come to me and say, why can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? These are the filters that we will be going through when you bring your heart. And if it doesn't align with one of these, then it's probably not what we're going to be doing. We're a church that believes in building bridges. We, love a, we, are, we are a church that love being family, and we are a church that are motivated in becoming disciples. These principles will be shaping us over the next few years, building God's kingdom here in Winton and Bournemouth. Let's stand. Thank you for your patience. I'm just going to preach after our next song, if that's okay. (laughs) We're going to close with a song. I don't know if you've got you've you've got another one, haven't you? Some big things have been spoken about today. Some recognizing a, a change of season for many things, but. God's still on the throne, okay? He's still on the throne. He's still at work, and he always will be. And I look forward to what he's going to do in five years' time when we sit on a Vision Sunday and we give thanks for the whatever's happened, or next year, or in six months' time. Father, we give you ourselves. We give you this place. We can do this work. We can prepare these words. But we know, like your word says, without my spirit, 
you build in vain. And so, Lord, we ask you to bless these words. We ask you to commission these words. We ask for your presence to come, your spirit to anoint us, Lord, this morning. And all that's been said, and that, Lord, as we've just declared earlier on, spirit, lead us. And, Lord, if it's not you, we're not going. Simple as. Amen. Amen. If it's not you, we're not going. We'll stay put. And we'll wait, Lord, until you speak. We'll wait, Lord, until you move. We'll wait, Lord, until you act. Because, Lord, we are your people. We are an expression of your church here in the community of Winton. And we love it. What a gift to be here. Lord, thank you for your goodness today. Lord, may we know your love again, your revelation of who you are and who we are. And Lord, would it be this truth that would empower us to be your people this week? In Jesus' precious name. Amen. We're going to close with a song and then you are free to eat cake. Amen. Amen. Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful. Where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place. Though I'm born through the wilderness. Blessed be your name.